Hi everyone. So I wanted to make a part two video uh, related to YVO3D's beta. Uh, so basically I just want to show you guys, if you haven't signed up, uh, basically if you go to gallery, you can click on any of the examples that they have. It loads the model and I like the fact that they're using one key light. So their presentation is actually uh, really nice and it's very, very simple and easy to use. So you can obviously look at some of these models that they have and they have a lot of examples. Uh, just keep in mind that if you were to create something, it would most likely show up in the gallery. If you want to upgrade, you can basically go and they have new options now and you can read through these. You can either pay monthly or yearly and they do have various options and you can see they've given you, uh, they're actually giving you up to six, 6,500 credits per month on the premium account. And that will obviously give you early access to a lot of the new features prior to support and other things that you can control like the poly count. And the way that works, if I go into my workspace, you can see that I have created two different meshes so far. You can also click here and see the jobs in the queue, the resolution on all the other data that they're listing here. They also have a creator guide. You can basically click on here and they have some basic uh, information that you can go through that really gives you a lot of different tips and how to utilize this application. And then your credits are obviously here and it took me 30 credits actually uh, yes, 30 credits each mesh to create them. Uh, and you can basically mouse over here for the for the res. Uh, you can download the file here uh, and it downloads it as a GLB file format. Or you can also click here and you can just rename the mesh that you've created. Uh, click out of it here with X. And then there's the second piece here. And so far, uh, I brought in the file into Blender. And I was looking in Blender to see how I can actually improve it. Does it need anything? Uh, in my opinion, these can be easily utilized as is. And I will show you now in Unreal Engine that this is really impressive how these models actually come in. So there, again, their website is really uh, simple and basic. Notifications tab is up here. And then you have your own profile settings um, and then you also have your credits that you can click to subscription that takes you back to this window. So I'll switch to Unreal Engine and I'll show you guys uh, what I have created. So my goal was to really test and have firsthand experience with both of these um, app developers that are actually offering mesh generation. And one of them is actually the first one that I've tried, which is Spark. 3D and these meshes here, uh, including this little set that I put together, is actually created utilizing the meshes from Spark 3D. And I also included some of the meshes that I just brought in from YVO and I just wanted to compare it. So here, this model on the left is basically created using Spark 3D and the mesh generation is really impressive. I've already downloaded, uh, you know, a quite a bit of number of meshes and I just was testing them. I also brought them into a uh, substance painter. I was able to decimate the mesh in ZBrush and you can watch another video that kind of quickly goes over that and has a preview. But again, the meshes are really good and now they're offering textures as well. But the only thing that I've noticed that this actually doesn't have a really good normal map. And if you go into the material, you can see that the normal map that they have is not as detailed. That's the first thing that I've noticed here. And then also looking at their color file, you can see that the color file is also uh, really uh, simple. So if I actually zoom in, I will compare the two uh, in a second here. So there is not that much detail coming from the textures. This may change, but again, uh, could, could it be utilized? Certainly utilized, but I'll show you the difference now with YVO. So I'll switch to the mesh. These are two meshes actually uh, that you saw me cre uh, create. 
within the application. Uh, so I'll move the meshes here right now that are from Spark onto this side, which do not have any textures on. And again, really impressive. The meshes look great and can be certainly utilized in production uh, with the right sort of uh, pipeline and maybe creating some new materials or even texturing them yourself in substance or marmoset. So here I will basically go into now looking at the YVO meshes. Uh, these are incredible. I mean, it, it just looks really amazing. So if I was to go in and look at that shader now, so in this uh, material, obviously I have a lot more that I can control. I'm just showing you that making tweaks and changes uh, will definitely help your model. Obviously, it's going to look much better. So roughness, let me change my roughness here, just so you can see that um, that change helps right away. So I am going to put my roughness back to zero one. And you can see that I am getting a lot more information. I'm just going to undo that for now. Save. And now if I go into uh, this materials texture file, you can see there's a lot more detail. It almost looks like uh, the texture file, since it's coming from one image, a photograph, somehow they're uprising this uh, and adding a lot more detail. So I'm looking at the file, of course, it's only 2K. So I'm sure the 4K version they have has a lot more detail coming from the albedo. So that's a huge thing. And then again, going into their normal map, if I was to open up the other normal map um, and compare it, you can see that this normal map has a lot more information inside the file. So that obviously helps and makes a huge difference. Again, if you look at it, it's 2K. I personally have tried 4K maps. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. You can always go into your MIP gen settings and set this to maybe sharpen or no MIP map. Uh, and again, it's just a matter of adjusting. And I don't think we do this manually when I go in and model or texture things. Of course, it takes a lot of time and tweaking uh, and it's not going to happen quickly. So the same thing goes with uh, AI generated meshes. This is a new technology. It's still evolving, just like when 2D image generators came out and um, it wasn't kind of perfect or it didn't meet the requirements of an artist that wanted to utilize that. But this will also go into change and evolve. So as these developers are growing or adding more features, I think this could be certainly utilized and you can quickly create meshes that you can test the scene at least. So here, that was my goal. And I'm actually going to create a playable file so you guys can play this file and see it for yourself. I will probably upload that and include the link for you guys so you can download that uh, playable. But again, like I said, Spark 3D, I think they're doing a great job. Uh, both these companies are uh, creating amazing uh, elements here that are definitely uh, production friendly. Uh, and again, I personally uh, like to get things looking the best way possible. So most likely on my next video, I will be going into Substance Painter. And I just want to be able to uh, bring them in and just see what else can I do to improve them. So the only thing that I've noticed, obviously, on the back. Having any, you know, there's no data in the back of the uh, model because we're not uploading multiple images. And I think this could be solved. And I'm sure the developers, obviously, uh, understanding game production or production in general, uh, they will most likely uh, upgrade and improve uh, for us to have the ability to tweak these within the app maybe. So you don't even have to go into Substance Painter. Maybe eventually it's gonna be a pipeline where you're just using an application and you're doing the same thing that you would do in Substance. You know, it's not gonna be as detailed maybe. This is now a totally new workflow. So I know that there's high production, uh, there's, you know, low production, um, there's previs. So this could definitely be plugged in 
into any production to be utilized. It basically is going to take a little bit of uh, testing and playing, but I hope you find this uh, video uh, useful or interesting. Always make your own judgment. Uh, you can download these and you can do the same thing very easily uh, within the amazing engine of Unreal uh, to be able to quickly visualize these things and see it for yourself. I have an opportunity on the weekends to experiment with these things. Everything is evolving very quickly and it's always a good idea to go in and at least explore these new technologies and understand how these could be affecting our industry uh, and what kind of opportunities will come out of this and how can it be utilized for production. As computers are going to get faster, uh, I think production will speed up too. Uh, it's going to be parallel because if you have uh, really fast supercomputers at some point, you will be able to generate things a lot faster, uh, whether it's production or pre or even uh, just things that you want to do in pre-production stage. So again, hope you find this uh, interesting and I'll see you guys on the next video.